Have you heard the strange tales of the whistler? sifted the whole thing down to you four people. I know one of you is the murderer of my brother, and I'll not turn this ship about until that one is discovered. Friday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the strange story of Eye for an Eye. Just before dawn of a day in 1940, a small seagoing yacht with a crew of four and a passenger list of five puts out from the Honolulu Yacht Basin and heads southwest into the open sea. This is the yacht of Dr. Paul Durant, scientist and marine biologist, for many years a resident of the islands. Dr. Durant is already in the wardroom as one by one his guests arrive for breakfast. Keep your course, sir, due southwest, Captain. Due southwest? This summer weather is treacherous. Due southwest. I'll tell you when to put about. Yes, Doctor. Just as you say. Morning, Doctor. Oh, come in, Professor Mallory. Breakfast in a few minutes. I've been on deck for some time, Doctor. I can't understand it. We seem to have lost sight of land. Have we? Well, fog, perhaps. No, no sign of fog. I I thought we were going to cruise around the island. Oh, well, it gets too rough when you stay close to shore, does it? Good morning, everybody. Where on earth are we? I don't see land any place. What goes? I I have a feeling we're miles out to sea. Do you, owner? I had the same idea, owner. I ordered the ship out to deeper water so, so we could do a bit of hunting. Hunting? Hunting for a nice school of big fish. (laughs) A lot of killers out here now. We should be able to catch one of them. Good morning. Doctor, I'd like to ask you a question. Yes, I'm sure I know what it is, and I'm sure I can answer it. Why are we so far out to sea? Yes. Well, Karen, it's because I want to... I want to talk to you. Come in, Hal. I know what you want to ask me. Karen just asked me the same question, so I'll answer you both at the same time. Okay, what is the answer? Well, this happens to be the season for catching the big ones. The killers, we call them. So I decided to put out a way in order to get a crack at one of them. Killers? Yes. Apparently, you're not a fisherman, Hal. But I'm sure you'll find it interesting. Hey, look, Doc, what's on your mind? I've been suspicious of you ever since you invited me on this weekend cruise. Have you, Mr. Norton? Why? Why should you ask me on this cruise? I don't know you that well. I've seen you many times. Your brother introduced us at the gambling joint, but well, I... I wouldn't think too much about it, Hal. I must say this is a peculiar group for you to select, Doctor. I don't think so, Professor. You all knew each other, didn't you? Well, yes, in a way. I know the professor, but I've never been friendly with Hal Norton or Ona Raymond. I know Hal Norton's a gambler, and Ona's a nightclub singer. I've known Ona for several years. I know Miss Karen Somerset's a social deb, and the professor's John Mallory. I've seen him at various times. Then if you all know that much about each other, I should think this is an opportunity to really get acquainted. Who said we wanted to? Doctor, please turn around and go back. Please. No, I can't. Why not? I'll tell you. You all know that three months ago, my brother Gerald was murdered. The murderer was never found. You four people were the ones selected. Selected for what? I've sifted the whole thing down to you four. The ones with the most likely motives for wanting to kill him. I know that one of you four is the murderer. I'm not going back until the guilty one is discovered or confesses. I won't turn about, even if I have to kill you all. I can blow this ship to pieces with a touch of a button, and I will. Well, now that you know why you're here... Each one of you had best guard himself carefully. For if the killer is exposed, he'll try to protect himself. Breakfast is ready, Doctor. Oh, yes. Let us forget the situation for the moment and enjoy our breakfast. Come, friends. Well, Dr. Durant, now you have set up a situation in which each one of the four suspects the others. And each one knows that if he is to return alive... The guilty party must be discovered as soon as possible. Because the doctor is serious. Now, for some strange reason, the gambler Hal Norton seeks out Karen Somerset, the society girl. Well, Mr. Norton, what's on your mind? I want to talk to you. What do you want? Look, the doc's serious. 
He's got us out here, and he means what he says about blowing all of us up. Now, let's straighten this thing out. There's no use all of us being killed. Oh, you think I killed his brother, Gerald? Well, you certainly had a motive. You were in love with Gerald Durant, and you knew he'd fallen for Ona Raymond. You were afraid he was going to marry Ona and ditch you, so you killed him. That's a lie. I knew about him and Ona, but I didn't kill him. Well, it's a good motive, a strong motive. Well, I'll admit I was madly in love with Gerald. When I learned he was smitten with Ona, I was wild, but I didn't kill him. If I'd killed anybody, it would have been Ona. <laughs> I can imagine. What about you? You had a motive, just as good as the one you attribute to me. I don't be silly. What motive? You were in love with Ona. You figured she was tossing you over for Gerald. You couldn't take it, so it was only natural that you killed Gerald. <laughs> I know how you gangsters think. What do you mean, gangsters? Yes, Hal Norton, you had just as good a motive. So you better forget all about it. Hmm. A clever bluff, Karen. But I don't fall for that stuff. And I don't fall for your type of bluff. You think I had a motive, and I think you had one. So we're even, understand? Even, Mr. Norton. Good night. Well, so that is the situation between Karen Somerset, the society girl, and Hal Norton, the gambler. Now let us see what Professor John Mallory and the nightclub singer Ona Raymond have to say about it. Oh, hello, Professor. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you, Miss Raymond. Don't be so formal. My name is Ona. Of course. You're aware that the situation existing aboard this yacht is most serious. Maybe. Dr. Durant means exactly what he says. I think he's temporarily unbalanced. He's convinced that one of us killed his brother. And what do you think should be done? I think the guilty one should confess and save the lives of the ones who are innocent. I agree. So, uh... Why don't you confess, Professor? What? You certainly had a motive. You were in love with Karen Somerset. She refused you because she was in love with the doctor's brother. Turned you upside down and you couldn't take it, so you killed Gerald. What are you talking about? It's That's a good pure motive. imagination. It's a good motive. Motive? If anyone had a motive to kill Gerald, it was you. Huh. That's sure silly. No, Anna. You. You had the best motive of all of us. And I can tell you what it was. What? You, for the first time, decided you wanted to get married. You asked Gerald Durant to marry you. And he told you he had no intentions of marriage. You were furious. You knew then that he wasn't in love with you. That he was really in love with Karen. So you did the only thing one of your kind could think of. You killed him. You. Why, you get out of here. Get out. You did it and I know you did. And I'll prove it if I die in the attempt. But that night, Ona Raymond tosses on her bed. She cannot sleep. All she can think of is the professor's accusation. Then, toward midnight, she leaves her cabin. And finally, after wandering about the deck, she makes her way to the doctor's quarters. Doctor, I've been... Well, I've been making investigations and I've learned something. What have you learned, Ona? I know now who killed your brother and I can prove it. You seem to be very frightened, Ona. But I know the one who did it. And who is it? I... Well, I'd rather not tell just now. Why not? If you put the ship about and return to port, I'll tell you. Why not now? No, I'm... Well, I'm afraid. Afraid? Afraid of what? The guilty one knows that I know. I see. Well, then suppose I fix it so that no harm can come to you if you tell who it is. What then? Can you guarantee that, Doctor? I can. You tell me and nothing will happen to you. I'll see to that. Who is the guilty one? Well, it's... It's... <gasps> Doctor... Doc... Oh... Who's there? Who's out here? Well, <laughs> now that leaves just three. What is it, Doctor? Yeah, what's up now? Come in, Karen. Come in, Hal. What's that on the floor? What's happened? Remove the sheet, Captain. Let them see what's happened. Very well. Good Lord. Well, it's... It's Ona Raymond. Ona? When did this happen? Just 15 minutes ago. Surely one of you knows all about it. Where did it happen? She was standing right there. She was just about to disclose some information regarding the killer of my brother when there was a shot from that window. I ran to the door, but there was no one in sight. Where were you, Karen, 15 minutes ago? Well, I, I was in my cabin. And where were you, Professor Mallory? I was on the deck. On the deck, huh? And now may I ask, where were you... Are you crazy? Why should I want to kill Ona? I was in love with her. That may be true, but maybe she was about to tell the doctor something you didn't want to know. Oh, you're nuts. Just where were you 15 minutes ago, Hal? I... I was in my cabin. In your cabin? And you didn't hear the shot? I did not. You say you were in love with Ona, but did you love her enough to let her reveal the murderer of my brother 
Especially if you were the murderer. You'd better be sure before you start accusing me, brother. I merely asked a hypothetical question. Well, why don't you try some hypothetical questions on Karen and the professor here? They had just as good reasons to get rid of your brother. And Ona, if she was going to spill something. Ona's dead. That obviously eliminates her. Yeah? How do we know? Maybe you figured she was the one who killed your brother and you let her have it. And figure you can blame it on one of us. Dr. Durant, this is getting out of hand. I insist that we put about and return to port before anything else happens. If there's a killer on this yacht, let's go back and allow the authorities to handle it. And I refuse to do so, Captain. This is my yacht. And I am the captain. Are you? Well, if you interfere in my plan, I can very easily take care of that. I'll not put about until I'm satisfied that I know who the killer is. But that's ridiculous. A murder has been committed. I'll stay out here in the ocean till I learn the identity of the killer, even at the expense of the life of everyone on board. We have enough, enough fuel to keep running for more than a month. And if the engines are turned off, why, we can drift for many months. But what about food and fresh water? If it's necessary to stay out that long, then when hunger and thirst come along, maybe one of you will be ready to talk. Why, why you're crazier than I thought. Oh, uh, Captain, have this body removed and placed in ice. I want to take back all the evidence. Well, I think you may all return to your quarters. Good night. Yes, sir. Good night, Doctor. I'll go along with you, Karen. I'd like Professor, to... I'd prefer that you didn't. Didn't what? That you didn't talk to Miss Somerset. Go to your own cabins, if you please. Very well. Good night. Well, what are you waiting for, Hal? Look, Doc, uh, are you really serious about this business of staying out here until... Well, until we run out of water and food? If necessary. Uh, well, uh... Look, suppose I tip you off to something. Tip me off? I'd rather have something definite, Mr. Norton. Yeah, well, uh, I discovered something. I know who killed Ona. So whoever killed Ona must have been the one who killed your brother. Right? Well, it sounds logical. Go on. Well, if I'd killed Gerald because of Ona, it doesn't make sense that I'd kill the girl I loved. Go on, I follow you. The one who killed Ona certainly didn't care about her. Therefore, it must have been one of the other two. Either Karen or the professor. Yes? Well, I discovered something. Who is it? In view of what happened to Ona when she tried to tell you something I'd rather not say just now. And when would you like to tell what you know? You turn this boat around, head for home. And just before we reach port, I'll tell you. Oh, I'm not that stupid. You're stalling for time. I'm not. I know who shot Ona. I'll tell you what, Hal. I'll wait another week. And if nothing happens, if the guilty one isn't found, then I'll turn around and accept your proposition. But you'd better know what you're talking about. Don't worry. I know. I know plenty. Good night. Good night, Hal. <laughs> Hal Norton steps out of the doctor's cabin, completely unaware of the figure in the shadows by the open window, and goes to his cabin confident that he now has complete control of the situation. A few moments later, the captain in his cabin is manipulating the radio phone, attempting to make contact with the mainland. Hello? 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 Hello, this is the yacht Mongoose calling. The Mongoose calling. Hello? Hello? Mongoose to mainland. Yacht Mongoose calling Globe Radio. Come in. Emergency. Skipper of Yacht Mongoose calling Globe Radio. Hmm. Yacht Mongoose, emergency. Yacht Mongoose, position 10 degrees north, 170 degrees west. I can't understand why I can't... What do you want? What are you doing here? Get out of here. Keep away from me or I'll... Oh. victims aboard, the ill-fated yacht and its strange cargo pushes on south and west. Owner Raymond dead, and now the captain, and the radio phone damaged beyond repair. The captain's body is not discovered till sunup, but immediately following the discovery, the doctor calls his guests to his cabin. What's happened now, doctor? Why are us out at this early hour? Why, don't be so excited, professor. I'm not excited. First, sit down, professor. Have a cigarette, Doctor? Yes, thank you. 
Light? Mm. I think, Dr. Durant, that you had best sit down and take things easy. Uh, what do you mean? And the way your fingers and hands are trembling, something's upset you considerably. Is that so? Yes. Well, what's happened now? Someone tried to kill you during the night? I'll wait till Miss Somerset gets here, if you don't mind. And Hal Norton. Have you decided to go back, Doctor? No. No, I'm not going back. And of that I'm determined. Do you know what I think? I think you're somewhat unbalanced. What is it, Doctor? What's going on now? Well, come in, Karen. The doctor wants to talk to us. But he won't talk till the three of us are here. Sit down, Miss Somerset. Sit down and be calm. Why are you trembling, Miss Somerset? Oh, why shouldn't I be? To be waked out of a sleep and... Well... Go on, Miss Somerset. Well, this isn't the most pleasant voyage I've ever been on. What has upset you, Karen? Why, nothing. Nothing but the whole idea back of this trip. Don't worry, Karen. I just asked the doctor the same question. For some strange reason, he didn't want to say what made him upset. I prefer to say no more about this until Hal Norton gets here. Hal Norton and the captain. I want the captain to be present. He said he'd be right in. All right. All right, doctor. We'll just wait till they get here. And you, Karen, you don't mind waiting for the captain? Certainly not, but I... I... What were you going to say? Oh, nothing. I'm going to have the captain radiophone the mainland. Radiophone? What? That the murderer of my brother is aboard. That I know who it is. You should radio that you have a lunatic aboard. You yourself. Well, one of you knows that the radio... One of us knows what? What about the radio? I'll wait till Hal Norton gets here before I continue. Well, what's keeping him? Doctor, uh, I just went after Mr. Norton and he's... He's dead. Dead? Yeah, dead as a doornail. He's been stabbed. Dead? Yeah. He's cold as an icicle. I see. Well, will you tell the captain to come to my cabin at once? Uh, the captain? Well, I... I don't think he can. I, I mean, he's... You heard what I said, Johnson. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well... What's the matter with that sailor? I haven't the slightest idea. He seemed startled. Did he? Doctor, you're lying. What's happened to the captain? He's dead. What? Doctor. Yes. Someone killed him and smashed the radio phone. The same one who later killed Hal Norton. Why were you stalling? I wanted to watch your reactions when I said the captain would be here in a few moments. <laughs> He's trying to frighten us. Unfortunately, neither of you reacted in the way I'd expected. Well? But now that Hal is dead, it obviously narrows down to just you two. You, Karen, and the professor. One of you. And the sooner you give up, the better. Because as sure as I'm standing here, one of you, the guilty one, will kill the other. Nonsense. Suppose I did kill your brother because I loved Karen. Why should I kill Karen, the one I love? Wait a minute, John. I hate to say this, but you did have a motive for killing his brother. You were in love with me, and I told you definitely that I could never marry anyone but Gerald Durant. I know, I know. You could have killed Gerald, and then... When you came aboard this yacht and learned the situation... Karen, and... what are you trying to say? Owner Raymond could have learned something about your having killed Gerald. And when she was about to tell the doctor, you could have killed her. And maybe Hal, maybe he knew in some way who killed Owner. And you learned that, so you killed him. That's very logical. But on the other hand, take yourself, Karen. This is purely hypothetical, understand. You learned that Gerald, the doctor's brother, was madly in love with Owner Raymond, the chorus girl. So you killed him. Then, when Owner started to tell the doctor who it was, you killed her. Yes, that's logical, too, but... Wait, now. Hal Norton discovered who had killed Ona. And when he decided to tell the doctor who did that, well, you could have killed Hal. Oh, very well. But Hal said he knew who killed Ona, but he wouldn't divulge the name until this yacht had reached its home port. Probably because he was afraid of the same thing that happened to Ona when she started to tell what she knew. But it's now reduced down to two suspects. You, Professor, and Karen. That's right. So I'll leave it as it is for the two of you to figure out. And will not return until the score is settled. It might have been Ona who killed her brother. Or it might even have been Hal Norton. And another thing, do you know whom I consider another suspect? Whom? You, Doctor. You could have killed your brother. Why should I go to all this trouble if I had killed him? To place the blame on someone else. Why, you're mad. Stark, raving mad. I think you're the one who's mad. I think you're a diabolical maniac. Get out of here. Get out! Come on, Karen, let's go. And it's my opinion that we'd better not close our eyes tonight. Not once. A few hours later, the professor steps up to the doctor's cabin door, tries the knob, works a key in the lock, and steps inside. Who? Uh, who's there? Put up your hands, doctor, and stay where you are. What do you want, professor? Pick up that phone and order this ship to head for the nearest island. I'll do no such thing. Do as I say or I'll kill you. All right. But you won't get away with this. Yes, sir? Set a course for the nearest island at once. Yes, sir, at once. 
and order all hands to abandon ship within one hour. What? Because I have a time bomb set in a certain place, and the ship will blow up in an hour. Go on, tell them. All hands abandon ship within one hour. Why, sir? What happened? Tell him not to stop the engines. Don't stop the engines. I understand, sir. That you yourself have hidden the bomb, and the ship will blow up in an hour. Go on. I've planted a time bomb in the yacht, and it'll blow up in an hour. What? Well, yes, sir. I'll give the orders at once. But the doctor, but doctor, what... Abandon ship. Hang up. Abandon ship. Now, Dr. Durant, you might as well sit down on that bed and relax. Relax? How can I relax? Like this. That will keep you quiet, doctor. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. The doctor's gone crazy. He just found me. What does he mean? He's lost his mind. Says he planted a time bomb to blow us up. Well, why should he do that? He's insane. It may go off sooner than an hour. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. John. Abandon ship. John, what's wrong? What's happened? Get back to your cabin. Get back and stay there. Hurry. What do they mean, abandon ship? Get back to your cabin. I'll be there in a minute. The hands abandon ship. And when they are well away from the yacht, the professor rushes below deck and opens the seacocks. And as the water rushes in, he hurries to Karen's cabin. Karen. Karen, come on. No, not until you tell me what's happened. There isn't time for that. I'll explain later. Hurry, up on deck. The ship's sinking. What? Come on, we haven't a moment to lose. John, it is. It is sinking. What's happened? The doctor went crazy. He tried to sink the ship with a bomb and kill us both. Come on. There's a raft. We'll get off before it blows up. Hurry. <laughs> Professor make themselves fast aboard the raft. And a few minutes later, the yacht throws its bow in the air and shudders for a moment. Then... Two weeks pass, and Karen and the Professor, much to their sorrow, have found they selected a raft short on provisions, little water or food. Now the tropic sun is slowly devouring them. John. John. Hmm? Yes, Karen? Are you sure there's land around here? I... I thought there was. Or I... Or what, John? Or I wouldn't have done it. Why don't you tell me the truth, John? What happened? Well, I... I did it. I sank the ship. You? Why? The doctor was insane. I knew that. It was the only way to save ourselves. I made him order the hands to abandon ship. Then I opened the sea cocks. That blew up the boilers. And what became of the doctor? Well, he went down with the ship. Believe me, Karen, it was the best way. Best way? And here we are, our food gone, the water exhausted. I was positive there was an island near here. We must be caught in a current and have been drifting in the opposite direction. I can't stand this sun. It's driving me crazy. I can't stand it. Karen. Karen, darling. Yes, Joe. I love you, Karen. I know, but what does it matter now? I've got to tell you something. I've got to. I know now that we haven't a chance. What? For a while, I was certain of our position. But now, I... well... I want to tell you this. I did kill Ona. John. I killed her and I killed Hal Norton. What are you saying? Because I knew you were the guilty one. I knew you were the one who killed the doctor's brother. But you were justified in killing him, Karen. I knew Ona had discovered the truth, so I killed her. I knew that Hal knew what had happened to Ona. So I killed Hal. The doctor was insane with revenge. So I blew up the ship and that took care of him. No. No one will ever know. Oh, but... But you're wrong, John. I, I didn't kill Gerald Durant. But Karen, who else could have? I don't know, but I didn't. What does it matter now, Karen? The ship has gone down with all the evidence. Owner, Hal, the doctor. Hmm. The crew has ever picked up. Everything will be blamed on the doctor's insanity. Whether I'm guilty or not, what does it matter now? You know, we haven't a chance. I, I can tell by the way you talk. I know what's going to happen. This Thursday, it'll get worse. And we'll go out of our heads and start drinking sea water. Please, darling. Mm -hmm. You see, it's getting you, too. 
Yes. I'll have to admit it. Can't last much longer. Karen, it's going to get worse and worse. It'll be torture. So, here's a revolver. Why prolong the agony? It's bad enough now. Oh, but John, I, I wouldn't have the nerve. I, I just couldn't. I'm a coward. You'll not suffer. You'll never know what happened. No, no, I can't. I'm afraid. Karen, look. What is that? Over there. I don't see anything. Just a bit of fog. You sure? Are you sure? No, John, there's nothing. It's, it's just... Well... I thought for a moment I saw a ship. I can't see a thing. No. No, I guess... I guess it was just my eyes. Is, is that the way it starts, John? Yes, it... It won't be long now. There are sharks all about us. Yes, Karen. If we were to jump in, it might be a prolonged death. Horribly painful. All right, John. Whatever you say. Then turn around, Karen. No. No, I'll do it myself, but... I want to be sure. Very well. I'll go first. Will that convince you that it's painless? Yes. All right. John! John! Professor John Mallory had killed himself. But an hour later, the ship John thought he saw pulled alongside the raft in response to Karen's frantic signals. And on the raft were a woman and a dead man. A suicide. Yes, it was the ship John thought he saw. The ship Karen said she didn't see. But she saw it. She knew it was there. But she lied so that John would die first. Very clever, Karen. You are now safe aboard the ship. And no one knows but you and I that you were the one who killed the doctor's brother. And the captain of the yacht. And now all those who might threaten your freedom are out of the way. Not one remains. Most ingenious, Karen. <laughs> CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time, I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual tale. Good night. Here's a bulletin from the CBS News Bureau, Allied Headquarters, North Africa. General Dwight D. Eisenhower has just officially announced that the Allies are invading Sicily. The communique reads, Anglo-American Canadian forces under command of General Eisenhower began landing operations in Sicily. Landings were preceded by an air attack. Naval forces escorted the assault forces and bombarded the coast defenses during the assault. Stay tuned.